photographers are like windshield wipers. They clean glass for a living. They never prevent accidents from happening. They bend sometimes. It doesn't mean if five of them came to me for help, I wouldn't help them. You're crazy. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we have five desperate loser photographers in need of help, and today's episode will be a fun one because I got an adapter from Viltrox that allows Canon lenses to be used on little Nicky boys. So we're going to film with the same lens, Canon R8, Nikon Z30, what happens when we adapt? Will it autofocus? It should. The EF Z2. Affiliate links are down below. Was that your question? How would you explain Nikon having the better color science? What are the parameters you judge by? It's very simple. Just try not to make me look like I beg for cheese in the sewers. Some companies, for some reason, make my skin extra red and exaggerate the reds. Sony's known for that. Accurate. Not really at all. When I look in the mirror, I'm pretty happy. Pretty darn happy. And then sometimes I'll film myself on a Sony camera and I'm like, what the hell happened to me? Or the Insta360 Ace Pro. My God, like blotchy skin where I'm like, I don't look like that. Whereas Canon beautifies you. This is real. Maybe a little happier than I would be in normal life. They're so nice. So Nikon, when I switched over to them and started using the Z30, it was like, hot damn. The colors are so beautiful. And what I judge that by is skin tone evenness. So like you're not doing every little red mark I have exaggerated. That's nice. So like just a pleasing orangey hue. Then also the hair, black, not red. That's what I love. Nikon seems to do that. And whenever I see that for some reason, I'm like, oh, that looks so cool. It also does the teeth whiter. Some cameras make them extra yellow. I do not have white teeth, but they're not the freaky orange that like Panasonic used to give me. So like, I remember trying the M50 in Thailand and I was like, my teeth look so much whiter. I became obsessed with color science that day. So the choice is yours. You either buy a toothbrush or a new Canon camera or Nikon and you get those white teeth that you deserve. So like, it's not only the skin tones, the hair and the teeth, but also when you're outside the sky color. The other day, DJI Pocket 3 destroyed every camera I've ever had. And the one that stood out the most as being the worst was actually shockingly Sony with its purple skies. And I was like, what is that? Why is this happening to me? I don't understand Sony color science. And I think it's mostly to do with the white balance I should have kept it in 5,500 Kelvins for the whole day, but it was like sunny and cloudy. So I just wanted to let auto ride. The worst thing is when you're in auto and it changes throughout your clip. So you can't like correct something because there was one scene where it was like so ugly and cold and purple in the later stages of the one clip, but in the beginning it was super warm. So I was like, well, you can't change the white balance because uh, you're going to have to fade it. And so it's just a pain in the ass. Whereas Nikon, I do not have to touch anything, nor Canon. Yes, Canon can be a little cool, actually. This is an auto white balance ambient priority, and it's still very cool. I have to warm it up. Look at this. What the hell is that? But like, whatever. And Canon custom white balance, forget doing that, taking a picture, exiting the mode. So colors are real. Sure, you could learn in a college course how to fix them or just do it right in camera. So let us switch to this 24 mil Tony 1.4 on the Nikon now. You have no idea the hell that is my life. A lot of plot twists on this. What is happening with this? Oh my God, I want to punch so many things. This did not work on my Z30 wouldn't record nothing was working it's the irritations they're sending me firmware updates i finally found a hack where you could press record without a lens attached 
and then attach a lens, but if you fully clicked it, then it turned off. Now we're on the ZFC. It was autofocusing. Plot twist, it's a speed booster. Didn't even know that. No longer autofocusing. It was. Am I in focus and who cares? Was that your question? Hi Casey, thanks for your great videos. Been a fan for years. Wonder if you can suggest a lens for birding videos. I have a Sony ZV-E10. Oh God, yeah, great. Fun without the EVF. Oh, I can see this totally in just the screen. It's a Sony screen. I want to take videos and photos. Proof to the birding community that I actually saw the birds I claim to have. <laughs> his attempt at a joke or something. Sony APS-C, do you think the Tamron, do people never watch anything I say? Actually, since the ZV-E10 has no IBIS, it might actually work. Just lens stabe, you might be onto something. You could vlog with it and boom. 450 with your zoom range, that's not a lot. You can do it. But like that reminds me of the X-T4 when I had it with the 70 to 300. That was technically the same focal length, but Fuji had crops with their 4K60 and HD240, so it was extra. But you're not getting extra anything. You could put the digital stabe crop on, but that usually is very bad for telephoto. So like you're looking at like, why are you even doing this? Go get a little point and shoot. Like you're not in this realm yet. You're not ready. Get a Sony HX99. You'll get some stuff. You can vlog, you can zoom. It's pretty good. It's better than whatever the hell you're gonna do with a Tamron. At least it's a Zeiss lens. Why did it stop autofocusing? It's doing it tracking my eye right now and then it like gives up doing it and then it'll just turn off to manual focus at some point it gets tired it's like i can't do this it's not a great adapter so far why am i so dark now it doesn't oh boy contain the rage i'm hearing noises there did you see that it's just like, mm -mm, we got focus, we'll lock it. It's a cool feature, it just stays there. Like it auto focuses and then boom. Okay, now we're back on the Canon R10 with the 85 mil 1.2 EF, of course, Mark I, of course. And we will soon switch to this lens on the Z30. I have zero hope that that auto focus is gonna, oh man, it doesn't even manually focus this one. This shows a nightmare. What would your ideal specs be for a camcorder? It's just not gonna happen. The industry moves so slowly. It's not updating. All cameras, like, there's people working on them. It's like, okay, A7 IV, what's the A7 V gonna be? And there's a team of people working together. In camcorders, it's like, we had some stuff a long time ago. Should we update it with a USB-C cord? Maybe, I don't know. Like, there, nobody's working on them. In my perfect world, we would see one with an actual wide lens. Almost every camcorder is like 28 mil on the wide, plus like a digital stabe or something that's not vlog worthy. Where's the 15 to 35 camcorder? Not one exists. The DJI Pocket 3 is basically the camcorder now with a prime lens and a gimbal for some reason. It's basically killed off any hope that any company will release anything in that range of budget from point and shoot to bridge cam to anything. DJI has killed us all. But if a company was to do it, I would like to see just some heart, just like an actual attempt at making something good at video again, because most mirrorless cameras are way better. Huge sensors, you get a nice little donut. Come on now. Is that at 1.4? What the f- We're at 1.2 now. That was close. Oh my goodness. So we're talking, give me a lens on that thing that has 3D pop somehow. A Zeiss lens, so it's a Sony camcorder, one inch sensor, Zeiss lens, ultra wide. Not the ZV-1 Mark II that's worse than your Mark I. Nothing like that, an actual camcorder body, just a bigger Sony X3000. I'd be happy with a prime or a wide zoom. Give me a prime. 
I don't care what you do. Super slow-mo, obviously. You're a camcorder, you have big bodies, you're known for not overheating, you should be able to do better slow motion. I remember my old Panasonic camcorder was doing 240 frames, interpolated at least. So like, how come nobody has beat that? That was like the, one of the first cameras I ever had. Freaking thing. Camcorders usually have really nice stabe. Color science? Is somebody gonna do something? Canon? There's no Nikon camcorders. That's a bitch. You're so behind. Like, it's not even an industry. So, like, hopefully someone releases something. That's what I want, a video-centric thing. That's what a camcorder should be. But they're dead. They're more dead than any system. Let us switch now to the ZFC. Freaking with this lens. Yeah, that's gonna work. Auto exposure is not doing anything. It appears to be working. I just, I can't tell if I'm exposed at all. I don't think it's doing auto ISO. Whatever, man. What is your question? Like, I can read that from here. You asshole, why didn't you email it? I would still have to read the email. I meant voice message. You don't talk for a thousand years. Budget lenses in 2000. 13, I bought a Canon 5D Mark III with a 50 mil 1.2, 24 to 70, 2.8, 70-200, you're set for life. Anything you could get today will be a downgrade from that. Live in your sweet spot and stay there forever. Never strive to perfect it. I want great autofocus for video, Canon mirrorless, color science, filmmaking. Okay, so you have a 5D Mark III, some great lenses there. I'm not seeing the 85 mil 1.2, superior to the 50 in every way. If it's me, you have three options. You could just go for a used Canon EOS R, which is basically a 5D Mark IV for you. So like it's an upgrade in a lot of ways. You're getting good autofocus, it's just 1080p only. But like a lot of people think it looks better than the R8. There are definitely situations where the colors were nicer, more saturated skin tones, decent option. If not, your two options, there's a third sneaky option, 6D Mark II. You stay DSLR, but you get good autofocus now. Just throwing that one in there. It's up to you to catch it. You gonna catch it? R8 or R6 Mark II. Those are like somewhat budget. The R8 is obviously the cheapest one. Same sensor as the R6 II. You're not missing much. You get IBIS in the R6 II, but we've seen Canon warpy stuff and you're obviously going to vlog with your 24 to 70 2.8. That's why you're contacting me. That says Tony 1.3, by the way, and you can't stop it down to two. Why is that? I thought it was a speed booster. Should be Tony 9.9. So I would go R8. I've been very happy with it. And imagine if I had a 5D Mark III, I'd be disgusted. The screen doesn't even tilt. And then you get an R8 that like outperforms you in every way. And it's pretty cheap, pretty darn cheap. Especially if you can find one used. You're looking at a thousand dingers. Come on. So like you're done. You're done. Easy question answered. Nice lenses. Get more EF lenses. Never get an RF anything. You see they're coming with a 35mm 1.2. What's that going to be? Yes, I love that actual spec, but your element count's going to be high with sharp corners, no 3D pop. Oh, it's clinical RF glass. $3,000 plus, dollars, if not $3,500. Canadian prices don't even go that high. It's gonna be a dumb lens. EF all the way. I guarantee you the 35mm 1.4 Mark 1 will crush that thing in its sleep. RF, you suck. Let's switch to the Zeiss Planar, because that's a manual focus. And we've asked the last loser to leave my life forever. 
Okay, we're on the Zeiss Planar Old School 51.4 with a gash right in the front element. No mist filters. Stopped it down to Tony 4. Focused on the mic. Is my face in? Highly doubted. 200 ISO. That's stupid. It's choosing that, by the way. I just bought a Canon EOS R7 with RFS 18 to 150. Did I do okay? Is disappointing your family okay? Depends. Well, like, define okay. Is, like, bringing a goat cow milk that he'll throw up on your lawn okay? It's, it's okay. You're in super zoom hell. Like, any lens that goes that far is compromised at every single focal length. What are you going to use it for? If I had that set up, I would 18 mil. So I couldn't vlog with it. It's too tight. And then I only get 150. Couldn't get a squirrel in a shed. What are you doing with that setup? The Canon R8 is lighter, cheaper, better autofocus, full frame, more slow-mo features, better color science, probably. R7 is like the dumbest release. Ooh, we have Ibis. Everyone I've heard of says, my R5 is great. You know the guy Jen Wagner, he does the telephoto reviews, fantastic reviews. And every time he tests a Canon lens, he uses the R5 and then he'll throw you a bone with the R7 and the R7 never even comes close to the autofocus performance. Nothing is good in that camera. It's the dumbest purchase. And you got that lens. I'm so disappointed in you. Where's the EF glass? Do you have one piece? Where's the L lens? I've seen them. 350. I missed that deal and I'll never get it back. But one day, maybe we'll get close again. So 450, I might bounce. For the 35mm 1.4? Come on. If you get the 24mm 1.4 and you adapt it to that and you do a talking head thing, I'll still unsubscribe and thumb down your video, but at least you'll have some semblance of dignity back. Because what the hell are you doing? Those super zoom like a Tamron 18 to 300 like the other guy in this whole section. You bunch of super zoom hobos. It's the worst idea ever. Camcorders, that's why they suck. Because they do that. 28 to 600. Look how much different lengths I get. Where's the pop? We're witnessing it. So my final thoughts on this adapter. I think it autofocused pretty good on the 85 1.2 for some reason. It, the box stayed on me. It didn't lock into like, oh, uh oh, panic mode. So the 24 mils out. And if you're manually focusing, not bad. It's a speed booster with Canon EF glass. Who looked better today with the Nikon Color Science or Canon with the same basic lens? Crop factor is like 1.02 or something. Fantastic idea on paper. You need some firmwares to get it to work on the Z30. It doesn't work. I'll leave. How are you doing? You subscribing for more videos?